Alex Mello, your Cloud Guru friend. This is going to be part eight. This is actually just a continuation of part seven. I, it got long-winded last night, so I decided to make another video. And we just finished setting up our Packer script here, and we'll run through it. And we're actually going to run it. So I did find a couple of errors in here that I, I cleaned up. I mis I think I misspelled provisioner here, and I thought I cleaned that up. I needed an I-O-N-E-R. And there's one other thing I noticed. I had a, a, a typo with my US East one. But besides that, I, look, I think we're ready to go. Let's, go. let's go ahead and try to run this. Yeah, also I did notice here is I made one quick change to the install packages.bash. Had to add this here, the sudo app minus y install PHP SQL. So that way I needed that library to run. And also, when I'm all done with this, I will go ahead and put all these files up here. You can see right here, this is my GitHub, rep GitHub repository. I'll put it in the Terraform folder. And if you're done here, you can see right here, if you want to grab this stuff. So you can just go to my, this is, this is publicly available. So let's get going. Okay, let's actually try to run this now. If there's any typos or errors, we'll just fix them together here. The first thing we need to do is we're in this directory where our Packer file is here, because UPWD, you can see I'm in my project. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and run the init, which looks good. I've already done this before, but this is what you'd have to do. Now we need to run the build, so let's see what happens. This is gonna actually gonna run it. Okay, so far it's looking good. It's running. Okay, I'll let it run for a while and then um, I'll come back and we'll fix any errors up together. Looks like it successfully ran. Um, it took about uh, five and a half minutes to run. I did have to go back and clean up a couple things in the script here. Um, minus Ys were a little bit sloppy, so I made sure I had all the in sudo apt installs was cleaned up. But this, And I had one error with my sudo cd um, into the home directory. I didn't need the sudo there. So those were a couple silly mistakes. Once I cleaned that up, I did run it and it, I didn't see any obvious errors when it ran. And we should be able to go now see this AMI over on the console. So that being said, let's see if I can go see that. Let's bring this up here, bear with me here. Okay, so I had this open before. So I just need to refresh this. And yes, we do have the lab RDS image here. I've had some other ones from some previous scripts I ran, but now we actually have an AMI image. If we actually launch this, we should be able to get our web page to just start up the way we had it before without any problems. So let's give that a shot. Okay, there's one thing I wanted to do before we move on from getting away from the script here, is every time you create a new um, AMI image using this technique, you cannot replace a current one. It's against the rules. So that being said, I went over to the HashiCorp page that we looked at earlier in the previous video. Just Google it, and this is just a timestamp that you can get in here. It's just pure syntax. Just go find it here. You can use what I've got here. And then we can add this timestamp to the actual AMI name moving forward, which is local.timestamp. So that way, every time we create an AMI, it will have a current timestamp so we don't have to go and keep deleting them and we can keep track of them as we move forward. So that, that really helps with the automation. Okay, now I just ran that. Let's go look at the console again. Okay, now you see I just updated this. So we now have it with a timestamp on it. Lab RDS image. But I do want to go and just be, I want to put this whole stack in a Terraform, but first let's just make sure we can actually launch the image and it looks good before we automate this. So let's go to the dashboard here and let's launch an image. And we'll call this my, I'm a little bit slow today, my RDS page. It's gonna be kind of a test here. And let's go to, should have my MI, should be right in here. Where are my MIs? Give me a second, it's more than one. Okay, there she is. Let's go down here and instance type T2 micro. 
Um, I'll use a, a pair that I've already got. I don't really want to reinvent the wheel here. This is the one I use for this particular one. Okay, let's go ahead and launch this guy and see what happens. Since finally came up, it took about five minutes here. Um, it should be good to go. Let me just copy the public ID and make sure we can actually get into the web page, but we should be able to. Let me go over here and grab anything here. Do do do. I'll go over to here, paste this into a new window. And I do need that PHP on here. Ah, voila, we're looking pretty good here. So let's go up and add some data here. We'll just say Cleveland. Today's what? Cleveland. Day the 29th. 12, 29, 2022, sorry, a little bit longer, 2022, 15, the weather is finally sunny today, it's a little bit warmer, 40, and the wind speed is 8, so let's go ahead and send this, team up, database looks like it has the database, so we basically just created an AMI image, and now we can launch this, and our web page will work and we can update it. Now we need to do this whole stack in Terraform and that will be the next lesson. So we're going to go all the way from RDS, creating our image, the whole thing, and we can automate it almost like a, a pipeline. That being said, we'll see you in the next video.